Okay, here we go. The definitive list of the top 10 best Rush songs. No way! Okay, as any Rush fan would know, this is a crazy endeavor. There's over 170 songs that Rush has produced over their career. How is anybody, any Rush fan, going to whittle down a top 10 best Rush songs? Uh, yeah, others have attempted to do it. Watch Mojo attempted to do it. I didn't really like their list. And others, a few have done, have attempted to do that as well. The issue is it's really hard because there are many factors that would make one come up with a top 10 best Rush songs. And there's a lot of influences there. It could be a top 10, you know, favorite, your favorite 10 Rush songs, or you try to make it as objective as possible, but everybody has an opinion. I think it's easier to rank their albums because there are so many less of them, but a top 10 best Rush songs? Yeah, I'm going to attempt to do it. I'm going to try to do it as objectively as possible. And just so you know how difficult it is, to come up with a list like that. I've been trying to think of this list for years, actually since the band finished their career in 2015, since we knew that there weren't gonna be any more records. I started thinking thinking about what are the 10 best Rush songs? And my list has changed over the years. Even like a week or two, even before I record this video, I made yet another change to the list because there's some criteria that I use to try to come up with this list and to try to make it as objective as possible. And it's really hard. Right, Neil? Yes, it's hard. But I'm going to give it a go. I made some ground rules so that to try to make it as equitable as possible, uh, to make it as agreeable as possible. And I know that I'm going to get tons of comments and disagreements in the comments section. And please, I welcome that. I want to know what you guys think of this list. I want to know if you think this is an objective list as possible. If you have anything that you'd switch out, you'd have to say, I'd switch out this song for this song, but you got to say why, because I put a lot of thought into each of these songs and their position in this top 10 list. There's a few problems that I had to overcome in making this list. The biggest one is the moving pictures problem. The problem with moving pictures is that every song on that album is a killer song. They're all hits. They're all great songs. And you could put six, <laughs> you put all of those songs in a top 10 list because they're, they're all pretty much, or most of them, they're that good. I can obviously include most of moving pictures in a top 10 best songs of Rush. So in coming up with the songs for this list, I had to make some, not concessions, but I had to see, obviously there were many great songs after moving pictures. Were any of those as great? as the songs on Moving Pictures, uh, because Moving Pictures had such an impact on the fandom, on the band itself, on their perception in the media, in the music industry. So if I were to not use or pick a song from Moving Pictures, I would have to justify the reasons for including it instead of other songs. Now, I'm not going to go through the list and say, Witch Hunt is not in the top 10 list of Best Rush songs because of such and such. If it's not in the top 10 list, I'm not really going to talk about it. I'm just going to talk about the songs that are there. And then we can come up with our conclusions as, as to which ones we thought should have been there. I do have some exclusions of songs that I'm not, I'm definitely not going to include. I'm not going to mention any runner-ups. Like, let's say I thought which one should have been there. I'm not going to talk about any songs that, that's a runner-up, like, you know, 11 or 12 or anything like that. That's out. Also, I'm not going to include any sidelong songs. So, the Fountain of Lamneth, 2112, Hemispheres, they're out. Um, it's kind of unfair because they're so long, and you can make a case for any of those because they're such great songs, they're so complex. They're a category in and of itself, and it's very easy to include 2112 in the top 10 best songs by Rush because it's so, you know, a lot of people know it. Uh, but it's a sidelong. It's kind of like it's different animals, so we're going to exclude those. And I'm also not going to include instrumental. Instrumentals are out. I did another video, and you'll see the link up there if you want to see it. You don't have to watch it now. You can watch it later. But uh, I made a list of I, that where I ranked all of Rush's instrumentals from worst to best. I mean, least best to best best. None of them are bad, but um, I, do have, I did have to rank them. So you can look at that list. So this top 10 best Rush songs is not going to include instrumentals because I wanted these songs to be all about not only the musicianship, but also 
the lyrics, and just how great the song is overall. Now, what formula did I use to come up with which song is number 10 and which song is number 9, 8, all the way to number 1? Well, that information is privileged. Yeah, I'm going to keep that to myself. But I will tell you some of the criteria that I used to rank the songs. Amongst other criteria that I used, how popular the song is amongst the fans, how popular the songs are to the band themselves, how much they liked the songs, the song's international appeal, if any live versions of those songs elevated them to like a whole other level to show the potential of the song or that the song's potential was fleshed out, the significance of the song in Russia's history, if the song is kind of iconic in nature, that you know you hear a couple of notes from the song and people recognize it right away. So, and there are other factors that I used. So, you know, a mix of different things, and you know, some things had more of a weight, more than others. And like I said, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna keep it to myself as to how I, you know, gave one thing more importance than another. But now that you know what the criteria is, let's dig in. Finally, let's get to the top 10 best Rush songs of all time. And we'll start with number 10. Number 10 in Rush's top 10 best Rush songs of all time is Working Man. Working Man off of the debut album, Rush 1974. This song had a lot of importance because it was a song that broke Rush into the US. And Don Halper, who was a DJ at the time in Cleveland, uh, played that song and we in the radio station that she was working in at that time, and we know the rest is history. This song had a major significance in Rush's history. The impact that it had on Cleveland when they heard it for the first time, and, you know, this little band from Canada started to explode right away. Not worldwide or anything like that, but it was what got them in. It was... The song that was needed, it was the exposure that was needed to get them going, to get their popularity going, to get their influence going in the music scene. Working Man was the song. And another thing is the way Rush played the song live in Cleveland during the Time Machine tour in 2011. Wow, that exploded the song's value even more. It's such it's one of the, the one of Rush's best live performances in their entire career. That song, Working Man, from the Time Machine tour in 2011. I've never seen it played like that, and you saw the emotion of the fans, how much they were into it. They were loud the whole time. The musicianship of the three uh, in that time of their career, exceptional. They gave, made the song, they gave it justice, basically, from a time where they were starting out, and it's actually a note I consider to John Rutsey as well, who was on Rush's, you know, the original Rush, drummer for that first album only but I think John deserves a performance of his deserves to be in a top 10 because he was the one who played on that song originally that broke Rush into the scene so number 10 in Rush's top 10 best songs of all time Working Man I'd like to do something now that goes back a few years it's one of our very favorites. This is called The Past. Number nine in Rush's top 10 best songs of all time is The Past. The Past from Rush's release Presto in 1989. Uh, this was regularly cited by Giddy Lee as one of Rush's best songs. And he mentioned several times that they love to play that song. And it shows. I mean, it's, it's such a, um, a song of crying out. It's an impassioned plea, basically. And they just, it's a very well crafted song. And it was very popular, like I said, amongst the band. They love to play it. And the crowd over the years love to hear it as well. A lot of people reference that song as their favorite Rush song. And not only that, because of the deep message that that song is portraying about suicide, portraying it as something that's not really something to glamorize it's more something to give attention to to prevent it as much as possible and it's something that at one point or another affects each and every one of us i want to read something that neil mentioned when he was writing about this topic when he was coming up with the song i'm going to quote him he said i wanted to demythologize it 
Take the nobility out of it. Let's not pretend it's a hero's end. It's not a triumph. It's a tragedy. It's a personal tragedy for them, but much more for the people left behind. That was really the focus that Neil wanted to portray for the song. It's, you know, it's a tragedy. And the person who leaves, you know, they die, but there's all of this pain that's left behind by the person who chooses that path, chooses that way to end their life. The song is so impactful that for years and years and years, it resonates, even to this day. And it's just as relevant now as it was back then. So I think because of the topic of the song, how important it is to discuss, and this is the way that Rush chose to touch this subject, I think it was very respectful, and I think it was very important, and I think they executed it beautifully. And it shows with how much they love the song and how much the fans love the song as well. So number nine in Rush's top 10 best songs of all time, The Pass. Number eight in Rush's top 10 best songs of all time is Closer to the Heart, which came on A Farewell to Kings, 1977. One of Rush's shortest songs, lighthearted songs actually, and because it was so short, it was very radio friendly. So it was very easy to just put, hey, here's Rush, Closer to the Heart. It's over in less than three minutes. And it actually became an intent, you know, it was popular internationally as well. Over the years when they played it live, it sounded pretty much heavier especially if you hear it on Exit Stage Left. It sounded like a pretty heavy song. And even over the years, if you watch versions like on the Grace Under Pressure live video and then on A Show of Hands, and if you watch other videos that are you know, considered bootleg videos of other tours, and every time they played Closer to the Heart, and they played it for many, many years, you see that they extended the song with some jams at the end and some very funny rants by Alex Lifeson. <laughs> remained popular for so long that even during the Vapor Trails tour where they, they chose not to play it in uh, every venue but internationally when Rush went you know out of the country there was a cry to have that song played so they brought it back into the set list to play those you know to play those venues Rush is not was not really known for a band to indulge in fan requests but the fact that they brought this song back because it was so requested by the fans shows the power and the popularity of this song so it can't be denied it is a fan favorite so we'll put that one at number eight closer to the heart number seven in rush's top 10 best songs of all time is time stand still this song appears on the Hold Your Fire record from 1987, and it took on a whole new elevated meaning after the passing of Neil Peart in 2020. I think Neil wrote this song, the lyrics of this song were way beyond his years. He was still a young man when he wrote this, but such a mature topic, and the way he treated the passing of a friend, not only about the passing of a friend, really, but just the time, time passing. And there's nothing you can do about it. Just You just enjoy the moments that you have. When he makes the impassion, how Getty so eloquently expresses the feeling of the song when it says... These are just one-liners that just hit you in the gut. because It's a reality check. It's for us to see where we are in time, appreciate the family and friends we have, create moments, create memories because of the short, our short lifespan. You know, we have to take advantage 
and not be so negative. You know, be positive. Create moments that not only we'll remember, but our family and friends will remember with happiness and joy and funniness. And after Neil's passing, there were a few versions of this song, a few covers that were very, very touching. I may include a link to at least one of them in the comment section below or in the description. It's a theme that affects us all. Time stands still. Definitely deserves a spot in the top 10. Number six in Rush's top 10 best songs of all time is Subdivisions off of the Signals album in 1982. You can call this the, uh, the nerd's anthem because it's so exactly depicted the nerd, a nerd's situation growing up. Being the outcast, feeling like they don't belong, you know, feeling like they really don't know anybody that you know, shared the same interests as them. And, you know, when they finally found one person or two, you know, it would still be such a small group and still feel the intimidation of not being popular. So many people, so many people related to this song. And not only that, but the members of the band kind of felt that way, too, growing up. So th there was such a relationship that was kind of like interwoven between the members of Rush and the fandom. It just became... Yeah, like I mentioned, a nerd's anthem. And to kind of feel finally that they were not alone. And not only that they, that well, the nerd, that they were not alone. But not only that, but to see their favorite band write such a song that touched them at that level, related to them, identified them. That was something absolutely special. This also was a song that started, you could say, the synthesizer era of Rush. And although synthesizers were used more sporadically before that, this song, Subdivisions and Signals the Record, kind of marked the beginning of a greater use of the synthesizers in Rush's music. You could say that, that it was a, a turning point, or Rush went off in a tangent when this record came out. And I don't know if years previously I, w I would have included this song in the top 10 best songs of all time. I probably would have anyway, but this quote from Neil Peart from the Beyond the Lighted Stage documentary solidified my opinion, my belief, that this song should be in the top 10. Words can carry different freight for different people, of course, but those who do have the sensitivity to pay the kind of attention to lyrics that I put into them, it's wonderful to connect that way, to feel that you're not playing down to anyone. We always had the impression that people are just as smart as we are, so if we can figure this stuff out, they can too, you know? And we're not being that, that terrible, damning word, pretentious. We're not pretending anything. This is really what turned us on this year, you know? Lyrically, it's always been a reflection of my times and the times I observe. But everyone is a reflection of me. Number five in Rush's top 10 best songs of all time is Limelight off of Moving Pictures, 1981. This song, to me, seems more like a plea from the band to recognize that fame is not all it's made out to be. It has a lot of negatives. It does have a lot of positives, too. And I think the song beautifully captures the different sides of fame, where you have the verses where they're kind of happy, ish right and then you have the chorus which is very um kind of a little melancholy kind of lonesome and then one of alex's best solos of his entire career with rush kind of puts that on display it's kind of like a a somber kind of moody solo and you can hear it by the way he plays that solo and he's always mentioned that it's very difficult for him to recapture that solo live uh, that take was a very special take and I think he's done it a few times, but there are other times where he doesn't quite get it. But he admits it himself that, you know, there were, there were a few times where he actually nailed it. But definitely on moving pictures, he nailed it. And Neil writing this song, I think he just wanted to express how he felt about being approached. That it wasn't that he didn't like the attention per se, but he just felt uncomfortable with strangers coming up to him, you know, assuming that they had something in common already. It was just very uncomfortable for him. So I think he 
eloquently expressed how fans could respect the band and actually how the band could respect the fans. It's kind of like a very a mutual understanding, basically. And there are many people who, when they heard and read the lyrics to the song, especially famous people, they related to what he was saying there. So it not only was a famous or popular song amongst fans, it was popular amongst artists, too, that had expressed, yeah, I kind of feel like that, too. So I think Neil did a favor to a lot of people when he wrote this song. And then the way Alex and Getty wrote the music to complement the lyrics, it came, it just came out perfectly. There are many, many, many fans that cite this song, Limelight, as their favorite rush song. So it definitely deserves a spot in the top 10. Number four in Rush's top 10 of best songs of all time is The Spirit of Radio off of their Permanent Waves record, 1980. This may be one of Rush's happiest, if not happiest song that they ever wrote, that at the same time is a song of lamentation. The song celebrates the greatness of radio and, you know, one hearing a song that someone who doesn't know them at all, the DJ, plays a song that they like and everybody on that st that's listening to that station is hearing the song that I like, so that's super cool. But then later, as time goes on, you know, corporations start getting their hands into the scene, and it's not so much as fun to listen to the radio anymore as it once was. And me, personally, I, I don't listen to the radio at all anymore, because every time I put a rock station on the radio that, I, you know, I want to hear what's going on, for years and years, it's the same stuff that they always play. It's like there's nothing new because they're so corporatized now. It has to be a certain set list, and there's very little room for DJs to experiment. They just play play the songs, which I think a lot of people could do. Um, there was more creativity with DJs in years past, and that was something that the song celebrated, and not so much in recent times. An animated video of the song was put out not too long ago, and the aforementioned Donna Halper is there uh, animated, putting down the needle on Working Man. We know it was Working Man because that was the first song she put relating to Rush to be heard by Cleveland and the world. That was a great moment in Rush's history. And in Rush's history, their discography, this song marked a departure from how Rush wrote songs previously for example, in Hemispheres, which is the record right before, that was the last sidelong song that they did, the title track, Hemispheres. There were no more sidelong songs after that. From Permanent Waves forward, and The Spirit of Radio was the first song on Permanent Waves, it marked an era of creating shorter songs that could express as much as a sidelong song. They were very successful doing that all the way to the end of their career. And The Spirit of, the radio, Spirit of radio marked that time in the band's career when they started to focus more on these shorter songs. And it made them better writers because of that. It's a song that's loved worldwide. There's a bunch of YouTube reactors that, that have reacted to this song that I don't know of anyone that disliked the song. I mean, it's a fan favorite. There, again, this is also a song that many cite as their favorite Rush song. And absolutely, because of the history of this song, and what it means to the band and the fandom, it definitely deserves to be in the top 10. Woo, we're getting down to the nitty gritty. Top three, number three, the number three best rush song of all time is Xanadu. Xanadu is off of A Farewell to Kings, 1977. Music producer Rick Beato on his YouTube channel, created a whole video about Rush's best song, and he cited Xanadu as the best song. I'll include a link in the description below to that video, and he does a whole exposition on the song, the one, the, the studio version on A Farewell to Kings. I'm gonna have to respectfully disagree with Rick. I don't think this is Rush's best song of all time. I do think it's their third best song of all time. This song in 11 minutes covers over a thousand years time. The story about a guy who's looking for immortality, finds it, and doesn't like what it feels like. He gets bored. But 
with so much time passing, again, the lyrics that Neil Peart pens to describe first the, the initial feelings of the protagonist of the story and then what he felt afterwards, the negativity of his situation, really showed the ability at such a young age for Neil to write such lyrics and for the band to write such powerful, melodic, very composed, well-composed music to go along with those lyrics to express not only the ambience, the surroundings of what was going on, the terrain, the atmosphere, but also the journey of the character in the story. And this is also probably the first song where Rush really put their multitasking abilities on display. And you don't know that this is all going on really when you hear it on the studio. But fortunately, we have a live representation of the song on Exit Stage Left, which if I didn't, if I didn't see this live version, I might not even have included Xanadu in, in the top 10. But this live version from Exit Stage Left elevates the song to such a level that you see exemplified pretty much everything that Rush the band is about as far as lyrics, as far as musicianship, as far as creativity, as far as live performance. There's just like few songs that put all of those things together at such a high technical level. And on previous tours, they had played that song since it came out in 77 and it got better and better. But then when they performed it in the Moving Pictures tour, and now we have another version of it uh, live in YYZ, but the Exit Stage Left version to me is a pinnacle of that creativity. Or at least, you know, it was a plateau and they may have been creative in other ways afterwards, but that song, the, the way they rearranged it to be played on that tour just made it one of their best songs of all time. And for it to be ranked up at number three in my list as, you know, in their top 10 of all time, you know, that says a lot about the song, you know, written in 77, but even in this year, 2022, I consider it a top 10 song and actually way up there in the list at number three. And if you want to see my reaction and review of that particular performance of Xanadu, I'll include a link up above in the card. You can go check that out. All right. And then there were two. Number two in Russia's top 10 best songs of all time is Tom Sawyer. Tom Sawyer is off of Moving Pictures, 1981 release. Now, come on. There's a song better than Tom Sawyer in Russia's catalog? Yes, there is. We'll talk about that in a moment. But Tom Sawyer is probably Russia's best known song. If most people in the world, if they've ever heard of Rush at all, probably the song they've heard is Tom Sawyer. But this song really represents Rush lyrically, sonically, musicianship wise. And the version that I think anybody, like if you were to introduce Rush to someone for the first time and Tom Sawyer is the song you're going to use to introduce them, which is a, a great, uh, obviously a great uh, pick because it's Rush's most popular song. Actually, the studio version, the original video for Tom Sawyer, where it shows them in the studio actually playing the song as it's being recorded, it's one of the best versions of that song. It's such, you see them, they're so young. You know, it's like, it looks easy for them because they, they've played it tons of times already by the time they recorded it in the studio. But this song really just exemplifies what Rush is all about. They played the song on every tour since its inception, and it's one of Neil Peart's favorite songs to play because of how difficult it was. I've seen many people cover the song, many drummers cover the song. It's not that difficult note-wise, but no one can play it with the nuance that Neil Peart played it. Like when you hear the song, you can tell when Neil Peart's drumming in contrast to anybody else. I mean, there's only Neil could play it the way he did, and he loved it because whenever he nailed it, he felt a great satisfaction because of how difficult it is, and it really is. A difficult song because it really takes everything you have to keep it on pace without losing time and still playing all those fills that the song is famous for and YouTube reactors love this song 
I have not seen one React who doesn't like this song. They love it. And the thing that impresses almost everyone who sees the video for the first time is that it's just three guys making all that music. Many people come from other genres of music or just other bands that, you know, it's, un it's incomprehensible to see just three people creating all of this sound, all of this music. It makes a, a big impression on the first time viewer. And oddly enough, as great as this song is, many Rush fans love to hate it. If you ask many, many Rush fans what their top 10 Rush songs are, many times Tom Sawyer is not there because they're talking about, you know, their favorite song. Many people are tired of hearing Tom Sawyer because of how much it's played, but you can't deny the greatness of the song, the popularity of the song. Even by the band themselves, they recognized after recording it that this is going to be pretty good. <laughs> it was beyond their wildest imaginations how popular this song became. So as much as some fans love to hate it, you cannot deny that this is one of Rush's greatest songs of all time. It absolutely, no question, is a top 10 Rush song. But there's one better. Writing the, the great song, I still feel like it's in me somewhere. So, there's a really, truly great song in me somewhere that uh, hasn't come out yet. The number one Rush song, the number one best Rush song of all time is The Garden from Clockwork Angels in 2012. That clip that we saw earlier where Geddy Lee was still searching for that one song, that great song, that was way after Tom Sawyer was written. It was um, in the mid 90s where he mentioned, where he talked about that. And it would be many years later till I think they actually found the greatest song that they ever wrote. And it's The Garden. In creating the most beautiful, perfect closing song to the Clockwork Angels saga relating to the protagonist throughout all of his trials and tribulations that he went through. At the end, he just recognized that earning the love and respect of everybody is the most important thing, and it's a treasure to be guarded and to be cultivated. And oddly enough, that's the story of Rush. The Garden is the story of Rush the band. The way they live their lives throughout their entire career, I think, you know, living to not embarrass their parents <laughs> or their families, uh, always being respectful, always being loving. You never heard of them causing any trouble with anybody. They weren't the type of band who caused a ruckus wherever they stayed. They were very quiet. They were very much to themselves. They were very much, and they are still very much, into their families. They seemingly did everything they could to protect that treasure of love and respect that they earned. So the song actually, to me, is not only a description of the character in the story, but it also is, des is a description of the band, of each individual. The song is so good that it's very difficult to hear more than a few times. Like, I don't even remember the last time I heard that song from beginning to end, because it's very sad. At the time when it came out, it was such a poignant representation of where the character in the story ended up perfectly summed up. Now, it's different now that Neil's gone. And if you could sum up an autobiography of Neil in one song, this would be the song. And as the years went by after Clockwork Angels was completed, to me, that's what it seemed like it was. It was just, if Neil could sum up his life in a song, it would be The Garden. And he absolutely earned the love and respect uh, of his family, the band members, and his peers. The song contains one of Alex's greatest guitar solos. So way at the end of Rush's career, Alex comes up with that. And not only that, he plays piano in the song as well, which he rarely did. So that was a treat also. And the fact that they included a string ensemble to elevate the song even more just shows how Rush never stopped creating, never stopped trying to be better. And the whole Clockwork Angels album is, is a triumph in how men of their age could rock so hard and compose such great music tied into a story, but that each song could stand on its own, that you didn't, you didn't have to know anything about 
a book or a story about, you know, Clockwork Angels. Each song could be heard on its own, and it'd be, they would be great songs. It's not like other concept records where the songs were dependent on each other. You, you couldn't, if you heard it just by itself, you know, what is this talking about? Not so with Clockwork Angels. Not so with The Garden. The Garden on its own could be applied to anybody, and certainly applied to Neil Peart and the members of Rush. And not surprisingly, if we look at this list, this top 10 list, from Working Man all the way up to The Garden, I don't know if it was coincidental or not that the number 10 song was from their debut album and the number one song was from, from their last album. The conclusion to me is that Rush is the ultimate progressive rock band. Because of them not wanting to be the prototypical progressive rock band, they were more interested in progressing themselves as musicians, as artists. It shows their progression from that first album where they were really raw and they were Zeppelin-esque, whether they intended that or not. And through all of the phases that they went through, the progression that they showed throughout every single album and then culminating in an album like Clockwork Angels and their swan song, The Garden, shows that this is the pure definition of a progressive rock band. And actually, ultimately, I don't think any other band in that genre exemplifies that expression, progressive rock, like Rush did. So there you have it. That's my top 10. These are the songs, and I'll put it over here, listed on my screen, what the top 10 best Rush songs of all time are. Now, it's up to you. Let me know what you think. Do you think I'm crazy? Do you think some songs are out, are out of order? think some songs don't belong there at all? If you think there are other songs that should be in the top 10, let me know what song that is, why you think it should be there, and what song it should replace from the list. Don't tell me that, oh, this song should be on there and then leave it at that. Tell me which song your, your song should replace in the top 10. So I'm putting my stamp on this being Rush's best songs, the 10 best. So if you'd like to know why Rush fans love them so much, click on this video here. And if you want to see what video YouTube recommends you watch from my channel, it'll be over there. This is Omar Verado of All About Rush, and I'll see you in the next video.